Hey VC, this is Dave in Texas uh, doing part two of a album cover uh, thread that was started by Cosmic Pickle or that's his channel, his name's Gary. He uh, has a channel called Cosmic Pickle um, where he shows albums and discusses albums on the VC and uh, I made one video previously to this one and uh, this is part two. Now to backtrack a little bit, uh, I made a mistake on the, on my first video. It was on the first record I showed, so I'm going to rectify that. It was this uh, Mothers of Invention album, Weasels Rip My Flesh. I uh, attributed this album to Cal Shekel, which he did do a lot of uh, the Mothers albums, like this one here, this famous one here called We're Only In It For The Money. Uh, in fact, which is to take up on the uh, Beatles album, as uh, I'm sure a lot of you know, but uh, it says here in the liner notes, you know, that Cal Shekel did this one, and in fact it's the guy holding the egg carton right here, that's a picture of him, and uh, he's still alive and uh, still making art, uh, if you go online, he has a, a website that he uh, sells his art prints at and uh, you can buy art prints and he still has showings and stuff like that but at any rate uh, this album here is by Neon Park and I should have noticed that when I was looking at the album because it's it's noted uh, right over here Neon Park and uh, Neon Park was uh, a uh, moniker by a uh, Martin Muller and he designed uh, many album covers. Here's another one that, that I like that he designed by Little Feet and you can see it again right here he signed it Neon Park. They're kind of cartoony but they're nicely painted album covers and this is uh this is Little Feet's second album I believe nice uh, spread album cover this is uh, Sailing Shoes which I've always really liked as an album too it's real kind of uh, uh, oh golly how could you describe it it's, it's blues oriented but it's also kind of real uh, crude sort of not uh, uh, just in the way it's recorded and everything, the uh, you know the recording is real uh, kind of like uh, done live with uh, I don't know it's just uh, I want to say rubbery but that's not a, a real good uh, descriptor of it. But uh, I do love the album cover and I like the band too, Little Feet. They were from uh, Atlanta, I believe and uh, a good jam band but uh, Martin Muller or uh, uh, Neon Park did a lot of album covers uh, he, he did some for David Bowie and uh, the Beach Boys and many others uh, so uh, yeah there's the correction on that he also did this uh, Frank Zappa cover Here's another one I like. I didn't take these out of the cellophane, but I'll try and hold them to where you can see them. This is a Rocky Erickson, uh, musician from uh, Texas. This is uh, his uh, Rocky Erickson and the Aliens album. I think that's what it goes by. But I've always liked this album cover uh, just due to the collage nature of it. You now, as you can see right here in the middle, is Godzilla. And uh, of course, there's a picture of Rocky right in the center as well, with all these collaged elements around it. Uh, and then on the back, or uh, the, the album is made up of songs of different uh, horror movies and uh, uh, science fiction movies, stuff like uh, Two Headed Dog and. Uh, uh, I Walked With a Zombie and Night of the Vampire 
and uh, Creature with the Atom Atom Brain. It's a really good. It's a really neat album. Uh, just just because of the uh, subject matter, but uh, and it's and it's a real rockin' album too. It's it's you know as you can imagine from uh, Rocky Erickson, which you know started the early psychedelic band uh, 13th Floor Elevator. Uh, there's it's it's psychedelic and uh, you know real rock oriented. I particularly like this album during the summer. And I'll put, I'll pull it out and play it several times. It's it's a good album if you haven't heard it. <clears throat> this is one by uh, the Steve Miller Band. This is their first album, right here, and probably one of their better albums. Say say their first two, for me anyway, are their better albums. They were not quite so pop oriented as he got later on during the uh, later 70s, but uh, nice artwork. Uh, I looked this album up on the internet and I never could find anything really on who designed it. It's possible that it was just probably done in studio by the uh, art department. But I always wondered about these little, uh, this funny glyphic looking writing down here at the bottom. Uh, and as a, as a younger person I would always look at that and kind of wonder, it's like what is that mean or whatever but one night I was looking at it and it just kind of like hit on me you might could see it there but if you look in between this like that's a C right there children of the future which is the title of the album on the back here it's, or on the front it says the future there's a T right here and I don't know if that will show up but what it is, or here's the T over here, T-H-E, The Future. Uh, Children of the Future was the name of the album, and it's kind of like one of those uh, oh, magic eye things in a way. you got to really relax your eye to be able to see it. But, uh, yeah, I thought that was really a, a cool thing once it finally, you know, registered with me as to what that was saying. But uh, kind of really a, a Peter Max looking album art, I thought. And, uh, you know, like parts blues, parts psychedelic uh, album. But uh, yeah, that's one of uh, Steve Miller's better albums, as far as I'm concerned. <coughs> this is uh, an album by New Order. They were the band that came out of uh, Joy Division. Uh, once their uh, lead singer, I forget his name, uh, uh, died, they went on to make New Order, uh, which was more of an electronic kind of pop band. <clears throat> this album is Power, Corruption, and Lies, and I like the uh, reproduction on the uh, album cover here. On the back, it kind of looks like, I mean, and it's, it's all kind of like, it doesn't have their name on it. There might have been a sticker on the shrink wrap at one time, but uh, in the back kind of looks like a floppy disk. And uh, but uh, the cover is a reproduction uh, of a painting called "A Basket of Roses" by the uh, French Impressionist artist uh, Henry Latour, Henry uh, Frantin Latour which is in the uh, National Gallery's permanent art collection. But I always thought that uh, still life was really beautiful. And uh, supposedly, from what I read, it's like uh, you could kind of, there's they designed this thing where there was some kind of code and I never could figure it out to like tell you uh, what all, you know, the stuff is on here. Uh, the songs or whatever. Of course, you can always read it on the label, but uh, there was some sort of conceptual art informing the album. This is on, I think, Factory Records, if I'm not mistaken. Factory 12. But uh, my mother always liked this album cover. She uh, 
collected antiques and everything and uh, remarked to me one day that she thought this album cover was really pretty. And while we're on florals and still lives, here's another one that I always like. This is uh, Soft Machines uh, Bundles album. Always like this cover of the man uh, letting go the uh, pigeon there. This is the first album that Alan Holdsworth, which is a guitarist, a British guitarist, um, that's him right here, played with uh, Soft Machine. Uh, the album, album art was by a uh, British <coughs> artist by the name of Reg Cartwright. He was a painter and illustrator and he supposedly did like uh, 40 books for young readers, like uh, teen, teen and children's book, books. Uh, he also like created uh, puzzles and illustrations for magazines and greeting cards, posters and stuff like that. There was a book that featured this uh, artwork on it <coughs> uh, called Mr. Pot Potter's Pigeon. Uh, and the title of the uh, artwork itself is called The Pigeon Fancier. Uh, but, um, yeah, it, it, it kind of goes in a different direction from uh, Soft Machine's earlier albums, which were more progressive, and even the first two were kind of were really more psychedelic. But um, this one is more like fusion jazz in a way. And uh, Holdsworth uh, played there in Dallas a oh, couple of years back, I'd, I'd say, because uh, he's, he's dead now. But um, he played in Dallas at the uh, Kessler Theater, and uh, I was real sorry. It was kind of on the spur of the moment. My, I saw that he was playing, and I called my brother and asked if he, if he wanted to go, and uh, we both decided it was, it was too much of a hassle, but I wish I'd uh, made more of an attempt to see him. Uh, now more than ever since he's passed, but he was down in the area. Uh, he did that concert, and then he was going to go up to uh, North Texas to speak, and uh, which is known for their uh, music college. And uh, I would have liked to have heard that as well. <coughs> Here's one that uh, really I, I really bought it just for the album cover alone. I'm not a huge Oingo Boingo fan. I mean. Uh, you know they uh, were big with uh, big on MTV, kind of a, uh, a new wave type band. The music was always a little bit too quirky for me, but um, this uh, cover here always had a little bit of a sentimental value because it kind of reminds me of my mother in some ways. Uh, this cat right here, painting is by another uh, British artist that is, is Lewis Wayne. Uh, he became known for his cat drawings and kitten drawings and country scenes and stuff like that. Uh, he suffered from schizophrenia and uh, or, or so, so they say there's some uh, speculation on a lot of his history. It's uh, disputed whether he suffered with schizophrenia or Asperger's. But um, at any rate, you know how these uh, pharmaceutical salesmen, my mother used to work at the uh, state hospital there uh, in Big Spring as a switchboard operator. And uh, she got a uh, pencil holder with some of this artwork on it by Lewis Wayne. And it had four different paintings and the, I guess maybe the first one or the second one kind of looked like this cat here and then as it went on it showed his progression and with each one of the other paintings you know the cats got more abstract and more abstract where it just kind of looked like a, a paisley drawing or something by the end of it but uh, you know I was I picked this up because of the uh, Lewis Wayne painting supposedly uh, he started drawing cats uh, because uh, they rescued a, a black cat, black and white cat, in a rainstorm one time and he started, uh, his wife was sick, she uh, died of breast cancer, and uh, but she always wanted uh, Louis Wayne to uh, make a book or somehow get these uh, 
cat drawings and paintings published, which he eventually did, but it was after she had uh, died. But she encouraged him a lot to uh, do that. Uh, but anyway, um, I just thought it was interesting that Oingo Boingo would uh, use one of Louis Wayne's artworks on their album cover. And speaking of, uh, you know, he kind of anthropomorphized, which means, uh, you know, using animals in a, uh, doing, doing, using animals, you know, in human scenes. I mean, you, you can probably recall all those uh, paintings of dogs shooting pool and uh, whatever. Well, he did the same thing in a way. He had like cats uh, playing golf or, or cricket or something like that and would, you know, kind of put them in sort of a uh, cartoony uh, setting. And while, while on that, here's another one that's similar in tone. This is uh, uh, Boulez conducts uh, Zappa, The Perfect Stranger. And you can see another one of these uh, anthropomorphized uh, paintings with this dog here. Uh, this painting is by an American uh, artist who uh, uses uh, sim a similar style. He does uh, cats and dogs, chimpanzees, and uh, various uh, subject matter uh, in his oil paintings. And um, I guess that appealed to Zappa, Frank Zappa, in a lot of ways. Uh, he also helped produce the album covers for uh, The Perfect Strangers. Uh, there's an album that he did called uh, Francesco Zappa and the album called Them or Us. But, uh, you know, this is an inter interesting album here because. Uh, you know, it shows uh, Frank Zappa in his uh, influenced by his classical roots, and I always thought that if Frank Zappa, you know, could have lived a little bit longer, he would have been well. He still would have been very uh, varied in what he did. I'm I'm sure, but I'm I bet he would have probably done more things closer to you know classical music and stuff like that, or at least furthered it. Uh, here's one from a, a different era. This is Frank Sinatra's song for Swinging Lovers. And uh, I don't know much about uh, who did the album art for this, but I had read a lot of fans uh, of Frank Sinatra and a lot of critics too kind of, I think this is his fourth album. Uh, cite this as his best album. That's one of the reasons that I picked it up. And it's got songs on here that you've all recognized like I've Got You Under My Skin and uh, Anything Goes and uh, so on and so forth. Neat uh, liner notes. But originally when it was uh, produced they say that Frank was looking away from these this couple here and uh, later on they had it switched to where he was looking at the couple, which I think really probably works better. This is called uh, Songs for Swinging Lovers. And here's another one that's <laughs> totally different. This is called, this is by Ronaldo and the Loaf. This is Songs for Swinging Larvae. And this album here is by a Texas artist who also did some uh, Mothers of Invention covers. His name is Gary Panter, and he was born in Oklahoma, and but uh, raised here in Texas, some small town in Texas here. But uh, he kind of grew up and got famous during the punk movement and new age or new wave movement, and a lot of his art was uh, became famous through. Uh, the old Pee Wee Playhouse uh, TV show, but uh, I've always liked weird art myself. I mean, that's just my own preference, and and uh, I really like Gary Panter's art as well. He's he's also done like comic books, along with a lot of different art. Like he's done this one here, Song for Swing and Larvae, along with. Uh, 
here's one he did for a compilation album this is called uh, Subterranean Modern uh, you could <laughs> He has a lot of pop aesthetic uh, influences too. I mean, like this robot to me looks like it has some sort of Elvis Presley influence with this uh, pompadour on his head. But I've always liked that. These are songs uh, that uh, from four different bands, and uh, the theme of it is uh, you know music of San Francisco. Here you see the residents next to the Golden Gate Bridge. And I think all these bands are like uh, new wave punk bands. This is, uh, oh golly, I forget their name, Chrome, down here in the bottom. But uh, Tuxedo Moon. But uh, this is another one that, that I was just drawn to for the artwork, and I had to get it just to have uh, the uh, album cover. I just thought it was so cool. No, with the uh, this one here, everybody has a favorite Moody Blues album, and all their albums are really, I say, the, like their like their albums, you know, like the first whatever it is, uh, you know, six or so or seven albums are, are worth owning. But I've always liked this album cover here and the inside. But. Uh, this is Every Good Boy Deserves Favor, which I think is their fourth album, something like that. And I always wondered about the title to this. And I thought, that, that sounds like it has some kind of meaning, but it, I never could like figure out what it was. But if you take the uh, first letter of each word, E-G-B-D-F, it's part of the the scale and I, I don't have any way to show you what that means but if you've taken any music theory or taken piano or whatever you'll know what that EGBDF uh, means but uh, the album cover is by uh, I believe he's an uh, English artist who uh, also plays in a uh, British kind of noise uh, progressive electronic band called um, oh golly what's her name current 93 uh, the guy that painted this is uh, David Tiber I believe is how he uh, may uh, say his name T-I-B-E-R but uh, for the band for his own band current 93 he also did a similar painting similar to this and uh, he was supposed is supposedly influenced by uh, mysticism and uh, that type of thing, and he's he's self-taught, but, but for being self-taught, he's pretty accomplished, I'd say. <coughs> this is by the uh, Talking Heads. Uh, more songs about buildings and food. Uh, and I always like, this is their second album. Now I've always liked this album cover. It looked very modern. The back as well. Uh, the front cover is uh, a series, is a mosaic of uh, Polaroids that were all put together to form this collage of the band and the back uh, is a uh, satellite image of the United States taken by a uh, Landstat satellite but uh, yeah pretty pretty modern artwork and uh, I've always liked it for that fact it goes along well with their music This album is uh, Grateful Dead. Grateful Dead's album. Uh, I'll try and pronounce it. It's a right here's the title. It is uh, Ox O Mox Oa, which uh, it's uh, 
one of those words that you can say frontwards or backwards like uh, auto or um, <laughs> solos but uh, the album cover and it was also one of the first rock albums to be recorded using a 16-track uh, technology but um, the album cover itself is done by Rick Griffin who got famous for doing a lot of uh, uh, underground comic books there in San Francisco along with other uh, artists like Stanley Mouse and Alton Kelly uh, but uh, like I said, the uh, title is a palindrome that uh, is really just, it, it really is a, uh, doesn't have too much meaning. It's meaningless really from what I'd read online. And, uh, but uh, yeah, I like this back inset or this back cover as well. But I uh, always liked uh, Rick's way that he, uh, designed his posters and uh, artwork and uh, at any rate I thought this was a pretty uh, uh, interesting album cover and it's a good album. I think this is the Grateful Dead's third album if I'm not mistaken and it, it was one of the ones that took me a little bit longer to uh, get into uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, like once I got into it, then I, I really liked it. It's the songs are uh, like Seth Stevens is on here and uh, China Cat Sunflower, which are kind of like staples of uh, the Dead's uh, music, along with Cosmic Charlie. But uh, later on, like Rick Griffith, who, uh, who did this, later became a, a born again Christian. Uh, back in the 70s and uh, with that supposedly his, his art changed uh, I guess it would uh, along with his lifestyle but uh, back in uh, oh golly I forget when but he uh, he died in his 40s I think from a motorcycle accident but uh, yeah I've always appreciated his art Anyway, this has already run on a little bit too long, I guess, but uh, that's, this is part two. Uh, and uh, if you have any favorite albums, I'd like to, uh, album covers, I'd like to hear about them. So um, anyway, hope everybody is enjoying their music, enjoying the uh, weather, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye.